Welcome back to the Mathematics 23 Review Slides by UP Mathematics Club. Before proceeding, I would like to remind everyone that you can pause and play back the video if you get confused in the process. Also, you can post your questions in the comments below. In this video, we will be evaluating double integrals over general regions and in polar coordinates. For the first problem, we have to evaluate the double integral of 1 over y raised to 4 minus 3y cubed plus 2y squared minus 6y dy dx with these limits of integration. Take note that this integral uses vertical strips. Also notice that the integral would not be easy to integrate with respect to y. Hence, we will change the order of integration. From the given bounds, notice that the projection onto the xy plane is as illustrated in this graph below. Originally, the integral uses vertical strips, which would have given us values of y from the line y is equal to 1 third x minus 2 thirds to the curve y is equal to the square root of x minus 2. However, instead of that, we will be using horizontal strips, which will give us values of x from this curve y is equal to the square root of x minus 2 to this line y is equal to the 1 third x minus 2 thirds. From this equation, x would be equal to y squared plus 2. And from this equation of line, x would be equal to 3y plus 2. Also remember that the limits of integration for y would be 0 to 3. Using horizontal strips, we will get the double integral of 1 over y raised to 4 minus 3y cubed plus 2y squared minus 6y dx dy, where x is integrated from y squared plus 2 to 3y plus 2, and y from 0 to 3. First, integrating with respect to x, we treat y as a constant. So we have the integral from 0 to 3 of x all over y raised to 4 minus 3y cubed plus 2y squared minus 6y. And evaluating this with the limits of integration for x, we have the integral from 0 to 3 of 3y plus 2 minus the quantity y squared plus 2 all over y raised to 4 minus 3y cubed plus 2y squared minus 6y dy. Simplifying this integral, we have the integral from 0 to 3 of negative y times the quantity y minus 3 all over y times quantity y minus 3 multiplied by the quantity y squared plus 2 dy. Notice that we can factor out negative 1 from the numerator and cancel y multiplied by the quantity y minus 3 from the numerator and denominator. Hence, we have the negative integral from 0 to 3 of 1 all over y squared plus 2 dy. Now, integrating this with respect to y, we get the negative 1 over the square root of 2 multiplied by the tangent inverse of y all over the square root of 2. Evaluating this with the limits of integration for y, we have the negative of 1 over the square root of 2 times the tangent inverse of 3 over the square root of 2 minus tangent inverse of 0. Thus, since we have the answer as the negative of 1 over the square root of 2 multiplied by the tangent inverse of 3 all over the square root of 2. Moving on to the second problem, we have to evaluate the double integral of 2 
all over the quantity 1 plus x squared plus y squared raised to 2 dy dx with these limits of integration, where y is integrated from 0 to the square root of 1 minus x squared and x from negative 1 to 0. Sketching the region, we have this graph of a quarter of a circle. Originally, the region uses vertical strips or a type 1 region. Specifically, with its upper bound, y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared, or also equivalent to the unit circle. In the lower bound, y is equal to 0. With the x values from negative 1 to 0. However, notice that the region is a polar region. In particular, like I said, a quarter of a circle. So, it is easier to use polar coordinates. When converting an integral from Cartesian to polar coordinates, not only do we have to manipulate the integrand, we also have to change our limits of integration from dx dy to dr d theta. So using polar coordinates, our limits of integration for r ranges from 0 to this curve y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is also the unit circle. Recall that the maximum value for the radius of a unit circle is 1. So the limits of integration for r be from 0 to 1. Looking at the graph, we can get the limits of integration for theta from pi over 2 to pi. Using polar coordinates, we have the double integral of 2 all over 1 plus r squared raised to 2 of r d r d theta, where r is integrated from 0 to 1 and theta from pi over 2 to pi. When converting from Cartesian to polar coordinates, we have r equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Hence, we have this integral. Now, simplifying this integral, we'll just multiply r with the numerator. We have the double integral of 2r all over the quantity 1 plus r squared raised to 2 dr d theta, keeping our limits of integration. Using u substitution, we let u be equal to 1 plus r squared. Then the u would be equal to 2r dr. Moreover, from the limits of r 0 to 1, we get u is equal to 1 when r is equal to 0, and when r is equal to 1, we get u is equal to 0 we get u is equal to 2. Hence, using u substitution, we got a double integral of 1 over u squared du d theta. With u integrated from 1 to 2 and theta from pi over 2 to pi. Integrating with respect to u, we get the integral from pi over 2 to pi of negative 1 over u d theta. And evaluating this, with the limits of integration for u, we have integral from pi over 2 to pi of 1 half d theta. Further integrating this with respect to theta, we have 1 half theta. And evaluating this from pi over 2 to pi, we get our answer as pi over 4. That is all for this video, guys. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.